Today, we are talking about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth as we expose a 36,000-year-old Atlantean secret. But the thing is, these tablets aren't what most people think that they are. You see, this idea is being talked about a lot in spiritual circles and the New Age community in general. A lot is being said about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth and this mysterious information that they contain. But I have to tell you that, unfortunately, a lot of the information being relayed about this is absolutely wrong. They are something else entirely. And today we are going to be taking a look at what the Emerald Tablets of Thoth say, and we're going to be exploring secret societies, Atlantis, ancient Egypt. There is a lot of information here. So if you're familiar with the Emerald Tablets, if you've heard about them before, or even if you haven't, this is information that you need to know and is really important in understanding things like what secret societies are and how the occult systems work and how occultists operate. This is a really good example about this and is also very important when it comes to guarding your mind when it comes to watching various YouTube channels or reading different New Age material that puts information in a way that is perhaps not in the best way it could be. And you're going to see exactly what I mean. Like I said, important stuff that you need to know about. We're going to start right away. Just before we do, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Because remember, my channel is about bringing forward hidden knowledge, but it's not just about entertainment or anything like that. It's about raising consciousness. So we want to expose people to ideas that will get them to think critically and rationally and look within and unlock their own internal divine essence so that we can all live in a better world. That's what it's about. It's about creating a new world. So please like and subscribe because it helps spread this around. It helps the algorithm get this in front of more people. So I appreciate it. Also, if you enjoy my work, consider supporting on Patreon. It helps my channel grow, helps me create bigger and better videos, and you get access to all of our members-only videos. There's a new members-only video every single week. And so you can access that by supporting at any tier on patreon.com slash official or tier two or higher on YouTube by hitting the join button right below this video. Also be aware that there are scammers out there in the comments pretending to be me saying to join my WhatsApp, join my Telegram. They're even DMing people on other platforms. That's not me. OK, I don't have a WhatsApp. I don't have a Telegram. So that's not me. Don't fall for it. Also, there are people and groups out there who don't like what I'm doing, who don't like what we're doing. And they are spreading a lot of disinformation and misinformation about myself and our group and what we do. So just, hey, use logic and reason as always and don't fall for the BS. All right, here we go, my friends. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Now, like I said, these aren't what you think that they are. This is very interesting information. And what we're going to do is we are going to do a deep dive and see exactly what they are about and what they say. So I'm going to be, there's, like I said, so much to talk about here, but let's just get started. Let's get the ball rolling. So what we are actually going to do is look at where this information comes from, because a lot of people talk about this information, but do they really talk about where it comes from? Yeah, sure. They say, oh, well, it's this 36,000 year old tablets. And okay, but where are these tablets? Are, do they are they do they exist somewhere like what where where does this information come from? So that's exactly what we're going to look at right now. So where this information comes from. All right. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, by the way, not to be uh, confused with the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, which is something else we are going to talk about and is very important and is related to this. But the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean. This, this is the popular one that you've heard about in a lot of New Age and mystical circles lately. This originally comes from a book published in the 1930s by someone named Maurice Doriel. All right. So it's not like these emerald tablets exist in some museum somewhere or anything like that. All right. This information regarding these emerald tablets come from a book published in the 1930s by someone named Maurice Doriel. So what we're going to do right now, what I'm going to do is read from the preface, the very opening lines of this material that introduces the Emerald Tablets. And this is where all this comes from. OK, so let's let's take a look here and we're going to analyze it and we're going to unpack it. Now, it says here, once again, this is written by Maurice Doriel. The history of the tablets translated in the following pages is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous 
dating back to some 36,000 years BC. These are claiming to be 36,000 years old, not 3,600 years old, 36,000 years old. Now, really think about it. that is a very long time ago. So this is before, you know, Egypt as we understand it. This is in enormous amount of time. That's already something that, okay, well, let's log that away. Let's uh, see where this goes. So this individual is saying that the history of the tablets uh, reaches back all the way to 36,000 years BC. The writer is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. So the uh, position here is that these tablets were written by someone named Thoth, who was an Atlantean priest king who created a colony in Egypt after Atlantis sunk. He was the builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza, er uh, erroneously attributed to Cheops. So apparently this uh, Atlantean, Thoth the Atlantean, also built the Pyramid of Giza. In it, he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also secu uh, securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt from approximately 52,000 BC to 36,000 BC. All right, so again, now he's the ruler of Egypt and he ruled for 16,000 years old. So obviously we're not talking about an individual here. We're talking about someone who's literally supposed to be a god. There is this godlike being that's living for, you know, immortal, essentially, who has written these particular emerald tablets. For some 16,000 years, he ruled. At that time, the ancient barbarous race among them, which he and his followers had settled, had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Thoth was an immortal, that is, he had conquered death passing only when he willed and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. When the time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti, placed in it his records, and appointed guards for his secrets from among the highest of his people. So basically what I want to do here, just to Say, tell you what's going on. This preface is very short. We're going to read this preface. We're going to see what it has to say because I want you to see this where the source of this material is coming from and then we're going to dissect it. And I'm going to be telling you a lot of uh, information that's very important, but let's just read this preface so we can get to that part. So, when Thoth was getting ready to leave Egypt after ruling for apparently 16,000 years, he created the Great Pyramid over the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti, put his secret records in it, and appointed guards to guard his secrets. In later times, the descendants of these guards became the Pyramid Priests, by which Thoth was deified as the God of Wisdom, the Recorder, by those in the Age of Darkness which followed in his passing. In legend, the Halls of Amenti became the Underworld, the Halls of the Gods, where the soul passed after death for judgment. During later ages, the ego of Thoth passed into the bodies of men in the manner described in the tablets. As such, he incarnated three times, in his last being known as Hermes, the thrice born. In this incarnation, he left the writings known to modern occultists as the Emerald Tablets, a later and far lesser exposition of the ancient mysteries. So real quick here, they're saying that Thoth incarnated into various individuals. According to Doriel, he incarnated three times. One of those incarnations, he incarnated as Hermes and wrote another Emerald Tablet. So there's another Emerald Tablet called the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. Okay, And so we have to make a big demarcation between the Emerald Tablets of Thoth that are apparently 3,600 years old and then the uh, Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, which has to do with Hermeticism and alchemy, which we'll be discussing the differences here. So, the tablets translated in this work are 10, which left, 
which were left in the Great Pyramid in the custody of the pyramid priests. The ten are divided into 13 parts for the sake of convenience. The last two are so great and far-reaching in their import that at present it is forbidden to release them to the world at large. However, in those contained herein are secrets which will prove of an estimable value, uh, value to the serious student. Okay, so two of these tablets are super duper secret, not allowed to tell anyone about them, but the rest of the information is going to be in this book for the readers to be able to discover. They should be read not once, but a hundred times, for only thus can the true meaning be revealed. A casual reading will give glimpses of beauty, but more intensive study will open avenues of wisdom to the seeker. But now a word as to how these mighty secrets came to be revealed to modern man after being hidden so long. This is what's important to talk about. So we have a lot of big claims happening here. We have a claim that these were written 3,600 years ago by an Atlantean priest king who was an immortal, who built the Great Pyramid of Giza, who ruled Egypt for 16,000 years, who created these emerald tablets. And these are a lot of big claims here. And this is a lot of... Uh, a lot of interesting information, but a lot of claims. So the big question is, how did these secrets come to be revealed? And this is now what this individual is going to be explaining, how the secrets were revealed. So some 1300 years BC, Egypt, the ancient Chem, was in turmoil and many delegations of priests were sent to other parts of the world. Among these were some of the pyramid priests who carried with them the emerald tablets as a talisman by which they could exercise authority over the less advanced priestcraft of races descended from other Atlantean colonies. So you had priests traveling around and they were basically using the tablets as symbols of authority. The tablets were understood from legend to give the bearer authority from Thoth. The particular group of priests bearing the tablets immigrated to South America where they found a flourishing race, the Mayas, who remembered much of the ancient wisdom. Among these, the priests settled and remained. In the 10th century, the Mayas had thoroughly settled in the Yucatan and the tablets were placed beneath the altar of one of the great temples of the sun god. After the conquest of the Mayas by the Spaniards, the cities were abandoned and the treasures of the temple forgotten. It should be understand, understood that the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been and still is a temple of initiation into the mysteries. Jesus, Solomon, Apollonius, and others were initiated there. Here's some important stuff. The writer, the writer of this book, Marie Storiel, the writer who has a connection with the Great White Lodge, which also works through the Pyramid Priesthood, was instructed to recover and return to the Great Pyramid, the ancient tablets. Here is where we're getting to some very interesting information. So the writer claims to have a connection with the Great White Lodge. What is the Great White Lodge? I will be answering that question soon. It is a concept that is... Uh, makes its way through different secret societies and occult topics. So this individual is claiming to have a connection with the Great White Lodge and also works through the Pyramid Priesthood and was instructed to recover and return to the Great Pyramids, the ancient tablets. So essentially what this individual is saying is that he, the writer of the book, was instructed by the Pyramid Priesthood. So this was obviously some kind of spiritual instruction it wasn't some in, some person didn't come knock on his door he's saying that he's having some communication with higher beings that are telling him to recover and return to the great pyramid the ancient tablet so then they say hey go find the emerald tablets go find them and bring them back for us this after adventures which need not be detailed here was accomplished so just think about that for a minute. The, 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 the writer is saying that these super secret uh, 3,600 years old tablets that have been hidden for humanity for thousands, tens of thousands of years, he gets a message to say, hey, go find them. And he basically says, so I went out and find them, found them. I went out, I found them after a lot of adventures that I had. I don't need to talk about them, but I had a lot of adventures. 
I eventually found the Emerald Tablets. That's what he's saying. This, after adventures, which need not be detailed here, was accomplished. Before returning them, he was given permission, meaning the writer, was given permission to translate and retain a copy of the wisdom engraved on the tablets. This was done in 1925 and only now has been permission given for part to be published. It is expected that many will scoff, yet the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. So, he was given permission by the pyramid priesthood to translate these tablets before returning them. Now, a word as to the material aspect of the tablets. They consist of 12 tablets of emerald green formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and substances. In effect, the atomic and cellular structure is fixed. No change ever taking place. In this respect, they violate the material law of ionization. So, in other words, they're created from a mysterious, indestructible substance that defies the laws of physics. Upon them are engraved characters in the ancient Atlantean language, characters which respond to attuned thought waves, releasing the associated mental vibration in the mind of the reader. So in other words, on these tablets are engraved ancient Atlantean languages, and it communicates to the mind of the reader. The tablets are fastened together with hoops of golden color alloy suspended from a rod of the same material. So much for the material appearance. The wisdom contained therein is the foundation of the ancient mysteries. And for those who read with open eyes and mind, his wisdom shall be increased a hundredfold. Read, believe it or not, but read, and the vibration found therein will awaken a response in your soul. In the following pages, I reveal some of the mysteries which as yet have only been touched upon lightly either by myself or other teachers or students of the truth. Man's search for understanding of the laws which regulate his life has been unyielding, yet always just beyond the veil which shields the higher planes from material man's vision, the truth has existed, ready to be assimilated by those who enlarge their vision by turning inward, not outward, in their search. In the silence of material senses lies the keys to the unveiling of wisdom. Uh, hold on, let me make sure, let me see where I'm at here. Okay, there's just uh, a couple more paragraphs and then we'll start to unpack this. He who talks does not know, he who knows does not talk. The highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends all material words or symbols. Are so, and just to be clear, this sort of thing that's being discussed right now, I, I like this and I agree with this for the most part. All symbols are but keys to doors leading to truths, and many times the door is not opened because the key seems so great that the things which are beyond it are not visible. If we can understand that all keys, all material symbols are manifestations, but extensions of a great law and truth, we will begin to develop the vision which will enable us to penetrate beyond the veil. So, in the following pages, I will give an interpretation of the emerald tablets and their secret, hidden, and esoteric meanings. Concealed in the words of Thoth are many meanings that do not appear on the surface. Light of knowledge brought to bear upon the tablets will open many new fields for thought. Read and be wise, but only if the light of your own consciousness awakens the deep-seated understanding, which is an inherent quality of the soul. And then, the, that's the end of the preface, and it begins with what the Emerald Tablets apparently say, and Doriel's being the translations of these tablets. So, let's for a minute take a look and, and see what's being said here, okay? So what's being claimed is that these are 36,000-year-old tablets uh, written by a Atlantean priest king, basically a god, an immortal who incarnated many different times, who ruled Egypt for 16,000 years and hid these away in the Great Pyramid underneath in the halls of Amenti, guarded by guards, and then uh, they were taken around the world by the different priests, and who knows what happened to them. Then Doriel, in 1925, 
gets a message from the great white brotherhood and the pyramid priest kings to go find them and return them. He basically just says, so I did. Doesn't say how or where or what happened. He just said, oh yeah, I found them. And he was given permission to translate them before returning them. And these were apparently created in an indestructible emerald green material that defies the laws of physics, engraved with an Atlantean language that communicates with the reader's mind. So where are these tablets? Well, he had to give them back. So he doesn't have them. He had to return them. So a couple things to point out here. We're going to unpack a lot of this stuff. But a couple things to point here. First of all, these are very big claims. And this is what we have to do when we come to information, when we're dealing with the occult, when we're dealing with esoteric stuff, we have to think critically. We have to think logically. These are very big claims. You are claiming that there is a being who lived for, you know, 3,600 years ago, who created these emerald tablets that speak to the reader's mind. First of all, these are really big claims. How did you get them? All he says is, oh, well, I, I went out and found them. And then where are they? Oh, well, I had to give them back. Well, you first of all, this is very convenient that one no longer has access to these magical tablets that would clearly verify whether one was telling the truth about these things or not. So these are very, very big claims with zero evidence backing them up. So there is no this is someone simply claiming these things. I could have wrote that. I could have wrote all that. You know, I could have said, hey, guess what, guys? You know what? Yesterday I got a connection to the Great White Brotherhood. They can they told me to go out and find, you know, the secret discs of, uh, uh, you know. I, I don't know. Lucifer. And so I did. I found the secret discs of Lucifer in a secret angelic language. And I translated them. I had to give them back, though, because, you know, I couldn't keep them. They're not mine. But here's what they said. Listen to me. Now, if I tell you that, you should have some questions for me. If I come out there claiming this kind of stuff, you should have questions for me because that those are very large claims. Those are very big claims. One has to back up big claims with, uh, you know, something, reasons, logic, or evidence of some kind, depending on what kind of information is bring, being brought forward. Now, there's a couple other things here that are very, very important to point out because this has to do with secret side, secret societies and the occult. And whenever we're dealing with secret societies and the occult, we have to make sure that we are thinking very critically and logically because they intentionally use manipulation. Now, there's one thing that I, I want to say is that uh, the, the Atlantean tablets here, these emerald tablets of Thoth, and I'll be telling you more about why I believe this, I believe, that they are a hoax. They don't exist. They never existed. They don't exist. Maurice Doriel made this up. He made it up. He fabricated it. It's, it does not exist. Now, a couple things here. Just because they don't exist doesn't mean we can't learn from them. We can. We can, and, and we'll be reading them and taking a look at them. And there's some really interesting information in there, and we can read it and we can learn from it. But it's important to always have our logic and reason working in tandem with our intuitive exploration of this information because we have to realize where this information comes from so we don't get wrapped up in lies and the delusion it's kind of like when we read the gnostic material when we read the gnostic material on my channel there's a lot of great stuff that we can learn from it but we understand that these are metaphors and stories like the apocalypse of adam wasn't written by adam and the secret book of john wasn't written by john and and uh, none of these none of these books were written by the people that they say they were. And the uh, and they're all stories. There's no Yaldabaoth who is trapping souls here. It's a symbol for aspects of the self that need to be overcome so that we can reach higher states of mind and higher consciousness. So the difference here with this is that when it comes to Gnosticism, we explicitly realize, oh, OK, these are stories. These are metaphors, but we can learn from them. The problem is we can do the same thing with the Emerald Tablets. But we have to understand that they are not actually 36,000 year old tablets coming from an Atlantean priest king. And the problem is, is that a lot of people believe that because this is what is being spread around in the new age and spiritual community. And the reason why this is a problem 
is because we want to believe or incorporate information into our minds based on the merit of the principles themselves and not where it comes from. So basically what I mean by that is if we read the Emerald Tablets of Thoth and be like, oh, this these particular aspects of it, these particular principles, I agree with. They're interesting. I like them. I'm going to incorporate them in my life. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. However, if you believe these were written by the god Thoth, and so everything in it must be true, now you're going to start believing things, or a lot of people will believe things just because of the apparent divinity from where it comes, rather than on the merit of the principles themselves. And that's not higher consciousness. Reaching higher consciousness, reaching enlightenment, is about understanding how to expand the mind and understand how reality works, understand how the self works, and that requires active thinking and examination, not just believing what something says. And that's why a lot of times on my channel, I say my goal on this channel is to get you and get people, anyone watching, to think and give people the tools to be able to think for themselves. I don't want you to just believe the things that I say. Research for yourself. And that's why I always tell people the best way to start learning information is a philosophy 101 class. So you learn how to think critically and logically so you can explore these esoteric and occult ideas without being trapped in the manipulation that comes with them. And here's where we get to the idea of uh, secret societies. OK, so here, here's the problem with Maurice Doriel. OK, so Doriel is the author of this book. He said he found the tablets in 1925. This book came around or, or something along those lines. Now here's the issue. If, if, it, if it already wasn't suspicious enough that he apparently just somehow found these tablets and oops, had to give them back. Here's some more information about Doriel. Doriel also claimed to have traveled all over the world to train in secret knowledge, uh, places like Darjeeling in India and even a secret underground kingdom in Tibet. However, the problem is his passport showed that he actually didn't go to any of these places. So that's a problem. Now, Doriel tried to explain this away by saying, oh, well, they were astral travels. Like he went to them in his mind, not in uh, not actual locations. OK, well, that's pretty suspect to change your story after the fact. You know, if you're saying you're traveling all over to, you know, Darjeeling in India and secret underground kingdoms in Tibet and things like that. It sounds like you're saying that you actually went there, especially, by the way, when it says in this book that he had to go find these emerald tablets. And I'm sure if these emerald tablets actually existed, they were in some strange places in the world or not strange, but exotic places, probably not where he lived. He probably if he had to go find them, he probably had to travel those places. But he was just like, oh, well, after some adventures, I I found them. So that's a big issue. Big red flag. Doriel's claiming to have been all over these places in the world. His passport shows that's not the case at all. Here's uh, a lot more interesting information about Maurice Doriel. He claimed that he was born with total memory of all his past lives and incarnations. He also claimed that he was the anointed chosen one of the Great White Lodge. And um, I'll be explaining what the Great White Lodge, because we talked about the Great White Lodge and how he says he has a connection to the Great White Brotherhood. Uh, we're going to be talking about what that is. But he says that he's the chosen one of the Great White Lodge, and he started his own religious movement called the Brotherhood of the White Temple. And on top of this, he prophesied about a coming of an avatar that was chosen by ascended masters that would a start a new age of enlightenment, which didn't happen. He also claimed that he met two Atlanteans in Los Angeles who took him to a secret cave under Mount Shasta and educated him about secret underground races. He talked about uh, an alien serpent race that was flying around alien saucers that would ally with the Antichrist and that there were serpent people frozen in Siberia, but they became defrosted and ended up overthrowing the then communist regime in Russia. On top of all that, his wife, Margaret, accused him of cheating on her and Doriel actually complained that she called him a fraud in front of his disciples. So things aren't looking very good for Doriel here as far as being a reliable source of information, especially when your 
own wife in front of your disciples of your brotherhood of the white temple is saying that you're a fraud. So here's the thing. Do I know with 100% certainty that the emerald tablets are not real? No. There is a small chance they could be. Sure. Maybe he did. But if you look at all the evidence and you look at all the information and you look at the sources, it is highly, highly, highly unlikely. Unlikely. When you have this guy who's going around claiming to be the chosen one and talking about serpent races being frozen in Russia and meeting Atlanteans in Los Angeles and traveling all over the world when his passport says he didn't and his wife saying that you're a fraud and communicating with ascended masters. Not, not a good look. So it's very important to understand that when we're dealing with information like this, okay, when we're dealing with information like this, it's fine to read it and learn from it, but we have to be clear and lucid on it because I see so much BS going online around in the spiritual community about the Emerald Tablets of Thoth talking about them as if they were 100% real and like all these different like magical things that Thoth could do. And, and, and this really bothers me because if you're part of the new age or spiritual community and, and, and you're creating books or a YouTube channel or any kind of information, what you're usually claiming is that you're trying to help people like expose them to important information that will help them. But this is clearly if, if these gurus and spiritual people are, are, proliferating this information, either they're outright lying or they have done no research whatsoever or their critical thinking skills are near zero. Because any brief amount of research about this will bring up all this information, all this crazy stuff about Doriel. So either they know this and they don't care and they still just want to make a cool video about it or whatever. Or they haven't done any research at all. Or their, their critical thinking skills are very, very low. Because I, I hope that anyone, and you can verify this all your, yourself, you know, don't just take my word for it. Go, go look this stuff up. But looking at all this information, I think it's very clear that these, these tablets are a hoax. But it's important to understand in the overall arching world of occultism and secret societies, this is important to understand because it's a good example of why delving into occult and esoteric material can start to make you go crazy because there's a lot of manipulation in there. So here's the deal. What are secret societies? What do secret societies do? Um, there's a lot of things that secret societies do, but one of the biggest things that they do is they create religions. Okay. And I've spent a lot of time spending, uh, studying the occult. I spent a lot of time studying secret societies and they create religions. That's what they do uh, for whatever various purposes they might have. And the tactics that Doriel uses is super common. That's another big indication that these are BS because this is a super common pattern. They claim to have made contact with some kind of angel or God or an alien or they often are called ascended masters or secret chiefs. If you spend a lot of time in occultism, you'll hear about the secret chiefs. And why do they do this? Well, because it gives them a sense of authority. If you say, oh, well, my information, like how, how if Doriel didn't say this came from Thoth, no one would be talking about it today. The only reason why people are talking about it today are because, oh, wow, it came from Thoth. So rather, you know, if it came, oh, wow, it came from Thoth or it came from this ascended master or like many religions, it came from God. I had a, a prophetic vision. An angel came down and told me this. So these ideas here uh, are often used in secret societies in creating religions to create an authority around it. Because this gives you an authority, gives you a religion. Because, you know, if you're if you go, oh, well, I'm going to create what his, uh, you know, his... um. What was it the Brotherhood of the White Temple? I think was the name of the religion he started. I'm going to create the Brotherhood of the White Temple. Well, someone will go, well, who, 
How come you can do that? Well, I am the chosen one. I am the chosen one of the ascended masters. They have claimed that I am given permission to do this, etc. Uh, th this is happens a lot in a lot of occult communities. Um, I've seen I've seen this in a lot of different secret societies where you'll see the Grand Master, and and he'll be going, "Oh yes, well I received communication from the secret chiefs last night." And the secret chiefs told me X, Y, and Z. So we're going to do X, Y, and Z now. And of course, it didn't come from the secret chiefs. They just thought it up and and claimed that it was true. And, and, and But saying that it was by the secret chiefs gives them more authority. Now, a really good example of this is Mormonism and Joseph Smith. So uh, Joseph Smith was uh, a guy who's actually, who later became a Freemason. So Joseph Smith was very familiar with Freemasonry. He had family that were Freemasons. And if you look at Mormonism today, there is a ton of Mormon of uh, Freemasonic symbolism in Mormonism. So how did Mormonism start? Well, Joseph Smith claimed that he was guided by an angel and found secret golden plates engraved with Egyptian characters. Now, he translated these plates and this became the Book of Mormon. Well, where are the golden plates? He returned them to the angel. So you can see this is a very common pattern. It's very, very, very close to what Doriel did later. When, you know, Doriel followed this pattern where Doriel says, oh, well, I found these tablets engraved in an Atlantean language and I had to give them back to the this, this secret priests. So again, very common tactic done. And if uh, th this th this is why, like the information that I want to give out to people to help them understand reality better. Look, I'm not claiming that I got some communication from a god. I'm not claiming I channeled this information from an alien. I'm not claiming any of that BS. I'm just saying, hey, this is some important information to know. Humanity is going through a shift right now. We're going through a shift where we can reach a higher consciousness. Here are, the, here are the cognitive tools that we can use to learn this, like concept networking and metacognition and phenomenological experience. We can use this to expand the mind and then think about what I'm saying logically and critically and rationally. And if you come to the conclusion that it's helpful for your life, then incorporate it. If not, don't. Anyone that's going around telling you the, and, you, and you'll see this a lot, too, where people are claiming that, you know, um, they're star seeds or whatever. People claiming to have this authority. And like the concept of star seeds, someone in the chat said, Morg, stop pretending that you're not a star seed. We know you are or something like that. Now, for those who don't know, what a star seed is, is a new age term it has to do with like in Buddhism, it's the bodhisattva. Uh, a star seed is an individual who has chosen to incarnate to help humanity evolve is it possible that i did that sure is it possible that i didn't also possible i don't know and is it possible that you did as well it is possible but you can't not none of us can know that for sure we can have very strong intuitions about it being possibly the case we might think oh that's very possible i have a very strong intuition that that is the case and i believe that it is likely that many of us who are attracted to the neogenian system could have made the conscious choice to incarnate or localize on this planet to help move consciousness forward. But can we say that for sure? No, we can't. And anyone telling you that they can are BSing you or they are deluded because we don't have the abilities yet to do that. Humanity is half insane and we have to use our rational structure of the mind to be able to navigate this sea of consciousness that we're barely beginning to wake up from. Look around the world and see how many people are killing each other for the most ridiculous reasons just to show how literally crazy humans are right now. All of us are crazy and it's only by exercising our reason that we can overcome this and think objectively. Now this doesn't mean we want to become oh mechanical uh, beings that are just super we need to incorporate intuition and emotions with all these things. We want to build a world of love. We want to be very connected to the metaphysical domain, but we can do so in a way that's synergized with reason so we can be sure that we are on firm ground. Just like with 
the Emerald Tablets of Thoth here. We can take a look at the Emerald Tablets of Thoth and realize, hey, these didn't come from Thoth. But maybe there's some good information here. So let's take a look at it and examine it. And if we find some good information, we can learn from it. You can see we're using reason, but we're not being super closed off either. And I think another good example is like uh, the Law of One material. On my channel, I read the Law of One material from time to time, which is information that is claimed to have been channeled by a higher dimensional entity entity named Ra. Really good information. Check out the playlist on that if you in the video I did on that if you want to know more about that. But here's the thing. Do we know that that actually came from a higher dimensional entity name, named Ra? We don't know. Maybe it did, but maybe it didn't. But we can look at the information and see if we can learn from it without being like, oh my God, well, this higher dimensional entity called Ra said it, so it has to be true and it must be true. No. No. It, that's, that's not the case at all. All of these things, whether it's coming from a god or an alien or a priest or a prophet or a king or a whatever, doesn't matter. Use logic and reason to examine it critically. Because I'll tell you, many people out there, they're just bullshitting you. Especially when you start getting into the esoteric and the occult community. Because the problem is, is when you start getting into the esoteric and the occult community, a lot of the leaders there, and I'm generalizing, there are some great people in the esoteric and com occult community, right? There are some great, fabulous people. But I'm, war I'm just warning you about the ones who aren't. And there are quite a lot of them who are not good. And this is because when one starts to understand occult knowledge and esoteric knowledge, you start to raise your consciousness. You do. And so you begin to understand reality. And with the capabilities of understanding reality, you realize, oh, I can manipulate people. You realize you have the power to shape other people's consciousness because that's what you're doing when, when, when secret societies create these religions, whether it's Doriel creating the Brotherhood of the White Temple or it's Joseph Smith creating Mormonism or any of these religions that are created by these individuals or these societies, they're manipulating consciousness. That is what they are doing. And they know, they know that that's what they're doing. And they understand that they have the power to do that because they have reached a higher consciousness. Unfortunately, they haven't gone further in their consciousness to realize that that is not a ethical thing to do because ultimately you are keeping people in a lower state of consciousness by trapping them in a new reality tunnel that is inherently limited. So, and so the problem is, is that a lot of people kind of start to uh, achieve this higher consciousness, but then get this lust for power because they haven't gone all the way yet. In the Neogenian system, this is called developing the analog all, where you realize that everything is connected and we are a unity experiencing itself through a multiplicity. So in that sense, you realize, hey, we're all in this together. And we're all here to, to teach and learn from each other, not to overpower each other, not to dominate, not to have a restricted hierarchical system. Now, there's nothing wrong with hierarchy if it's done in a way where it's like a school system where there are professors and different grades and levels like that's perfectly fine. That's necessary for learning and, and having a structured society. But when it's done in a negative way, just purely for domination and uh, selfish power, that's the problem. So one has to be very, very careful in occultism because you have people who are beginning to reach a higher consciousness and they're kind of like a, you know, kindergartner with a machine gun. They, they have this power, but they, they're, they're, they don't know how to use it right and they're doing a lot of damage. So one has to be very careful when delving into these, you know, uh, occult systems and um, things like that. So uh, we, we talked a little bit about um, the secret chiefs. And if you if you just are curious and want to know, uh, the secret chiefs are talked about a lot in esoteric and occult traditions. And they're considered to be these spiritual beings or advanced humans who have mystical knowledge and wisdom. And they're these beings that are guiding the progress of humanity and they oversee all the different functionings of the different secret societies and the secret orders. And um, they, they're the spiritual authority. So essentially the secret chiefs are these secret beings that exist behind the scenes 
that guide secret societies and mystical orders. Uh, some sometimes they're thought of. It, it's it's unclear whether they actually have a corporeal form or they exist in the mental domain or whatever. But these beings and secret chiefs are, you know, said to give authority to these secret orders and they exist behind the scenes and, and stuff like that. And that's where the Great White Brotherhood comes in. So the Great White Brotherhood is uh, kind of similar to this, right? So the Great, not exactly the same, but it's it's very, very symbol, uh, very, very sim similar. So there are these perfected beings who basically spread spiritual teachings through selected humans so they're like the they've been called the ascended masters or the invisible church um it's been called all these different names um it's very common in uh, uh helena blavatsky's work in theosophy who says that she received messages from them and this happens a lot in in other systems i've seen uh different golden dawn communities talking about this sort of thing as well and once again, like, do we know for sure that there isn't these secret chiefs behind the scenes guiding things and controlling stuff? No, we don't know for sure. But if someone is coming to you saying like, hey, I talked to the secret chiefs last night. They rang me up. This is what we need to do now. That's just stupid. Like you might as well just not talk about them because you're, you, there's nothing to back it up. There's nothing to, um, you know, uh, solidify this claim. It's 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 the same thing as saying, oh, I had an angel come to me last night or, oh, oh, God spoke to me last night. The problem is, is when you start to believe people because of these systems that um, are clearly. Fabricated and are relying on this external authority, they're relying on the authority of the secret chiefs or the ascended masters or the. Um, great white brotherhood or, or whatever, or whatever. Be, the, the, this is where it really gets people all twisted and turned around. You can't tell up from down or left for right. You can't tell what's real and what's not real anymore because you have all these people claiming all these wild stuff, you know, just like David Icke will talk about reality being frequency, which is true. And then you'll have him talk about like the moon being hollow and it being a secret alien base and, all this wild stuff that's completely out there and has no grounding in reality or no evidence to back it up whatsoever. And that's the kind of problem that you get to when you when you get into these sorts of things. People who are either intentionally deluding people or are just deluded themselves because they had they never worked on their rational faculties. They've become victim of apophenia. So I do want to mention, however, though, um, the Emerald Tablets of Hermes Trismegistus. Now, these are very real. OK, so the, Her uh, the Emerald Tablets of uh, or the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus probably wasn't written by anyone named Hermes. It certainly wasn't written by the god Hermes, but it exists. It's real and it's very short. It's just like one, you know, it's just a few paragraphs long. And if you ever heard as above, so below, that's what it's famous for. And it's basically about. Uh, it, it, it has been, an, it became a huge fascination throughout history. Like Sir Isaac Newton was absolutely fascinated by it. Sir, Sir Isaac Newton actually did a translation of it. So very popular translation of it. And people thought it contained the secret of alchemy to turn metal into gold. Um, in my opinion, that's, I've read it. And that's not what it's about. In my opinion, in my opinion, it's about transforming matter into Divinity, in other words, transforming the soul. It's not about transforming metal into gold. It's about transforming the material into the spiritual. And if you're curious about that, I did a whole video actually on the Emerald Tablets. And I did a translation of it or my interpretation of it. You can go check that out uh, there. Now, the thing is, and, and what I want to hear from you guys in the comments, I want to know because so we've we've taken a look at the preface and the origin of the Emerald Tablets of Hermes Trismegistus, or the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. So I want to know, are you interested, do you want to know what the tablets themselves say? Do you want to see videos on what it says? We can continue this, continue these streams, 
and start to actually read the translation of these tablets and see what they say and see what we can learn from them. If you want that, let me know. Tell me in the comments. I'm very curious. But that's the most important thing to understand here. We can learn from this stuff. We can read from this stuff, just like any of this esoteric material. But we need to be lucid and clear when we do so. Just like when we read Gnosticism. I always tell you guys, these are analogies. These are metaphors. These are symbols. But we can learn from it. The problem with the Emerald Tablets of Thoth is that you have people going around saying that these are 36,000-year-old tablets. They were actually written by a god named Hermes who was an immortal that lived for 16,000 years and was the leader of um, and shot like lightning out of his staff. And I've heard some really wild, weird, crazy stuff. It's like, where are you even? How is this based in reality at all anymore? So these are it's clearly fake. It's clearly a fraud. fraud. It's not real. But that doesn't mean we can't learn from it. But it's very. Um, it's it's I believe that it is not OK for the spiritual gurus and YouTubers and content creators to be spreading the lie that these are real because they're not. Like, is there that 0.1% chance that there are? Yeah, it's possible, but the evidence is highly uh, in favor of it being a hoax. When you look at who Doriel was and the complete lack of evidence and the uh, way in which he apparently found them and then had them had to give them back, it's 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 clearly fake. So just th th this is just a good example. Be careful when you find you know when you start looking to occultism when you start looking to esoterica when you start hearing you know different uh you know youtubers or whatever creating content be careful examine it critically and logically because there are people who are either just really deluded or they've done no research or they don't have any critical thinking skills and either way you want to be very 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 suspect of what they are saying if that is the case always examine everything think for yourself Use logic and reason, use critical thinking, follow your intuition as well, but examine those intuitions with logic and reason and critical thinking. That includes everything that I say, that includes anything that anyone says. And this is the true way to reaching a higher state of mind and a higher state of consciousness. Reaching a higher consciousness is not about believing that a 36,000 year old Atlantis, Atlantean priest king created some indestructible tablets that can communicate with your mind. Believing that is not reaching higher consciousness. Higher consciousness is about understanding how to go beyond uh, self-awareness and understanding the interconnectivity of all existence and all reality and how to understand that in a logical and rational way and how to intuitively tap into the source domain and expand one's mind so, one's can, so one can literally conceive of concepts that were previously inconceivable. You can think new thoughts. You can have new ideas that are just not possible in the previous state of mind. And this has to do with learning how to structure your mind. It's abs 100% about learning how to structure your mind. Just, and I know I say it a lot, but I'm going to emphasize it again and again and again. Just believing what someone says does nothing for reaching a higher consciousness. Because reaching a higher consciousness isn't just about believing information. Reaching higher consciousness is about understanding yourself and existence. And you can only do that by coming to these conclusions, by under coming to these conclusions for yourself, understanding why certain things are true. If I, you know, say a certain thing about reality, like, oh, well, reality is frequency. You shouldn't, a person shouldn't just go, oh, okay. When you go, well, why is it all frequency? How is it all frequency? What does that mean that it's all frequency? The, the hows and the whys, the understanding, the explanations are all what is important to us, important to this. When we say reality is a living unity, well, what does that actually mean? What does a living unity mean? How is it possible that we are a living unity? How can we live a life that reflects the idea that we are a living unity? How can we know that this is true and not just some BS? All of these uh, questions are important. And like I said, the main important tools for reaching higher consciousness are metacognition, concept networking, and phenomenological experience. 
and I've touched on these before and I've talked about them a lot in various videos, but I will be putting out material that will be explaining this in detail, in depth, so one can have the tools to better understand themselves and reality and live a more you know, fulfilled and actualized life without being controlled by the strings of a brainwashed and conditioned system that is just churning out clones and drones and robots. Unfortunately, that's the world that we live in today, but we want to smash that structure and rebuild society so that we can have a planetary civilization where people are free to become themselves, self-actualize and reach the final stage of transcendence where they are helping others self-actualize as well. So we can create a society that's on a constant feedback loop to maximizing the quality of life for everyone. So my friends, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Tell me in the comments if you want to see what the actual tablets say and you want videos on that let me know please like and subscribe so that we can get this information out there spread it around so that people can understand this stuff it's important if you enjoy my work and you want to see my channel grow support over on patreon.com slash morgue official you'll get access to all of our members only videos and there's a new members only video every single week so that's any tier on patreon.com slash morgue official or tier two or higher right here on youtube by hitting the join button right below this video. And always remember, this isn't church, so don't feel obligated to support monetarily. You don't have to. There are plenty of free ways you can support, like liking and sharing and subscribing helps out a lot. Uh, I do wanna give a big shout out to everyone who supports, especially uh, Renaissance Fairy Cassidy, Angela, The Halloween Mom, DB, Enki, Musalina, Massam, Eric Fire, Christopher Smith, The Eternal Empire, and everyone else. Thank you very much.